Okay, everybody, here we are, man. We are back, and we're going to be hitting up side two of Gillian Welch's Soul Journey. Side one was excellent, man. She's a great singer, great songwriter, excellent creative mind, and can really shape an image and uh, an impression in your mind through her singing. Fantastic, man. And her collaboration with uh, guitarist... Uh, uh, David Rollins, I believe he's her uh, partner, uh, boyfriend, I'm not sure if they're married, uh, but I know that I think they're a couple. Uh, that collaboration is really, really powerful, man. So yeah, she's got all of the tools to become uh, a household name uh, in the very near future, uh, like that of uh, Joan Baez, for example. Really fantastic singer. So with that said, man, let's hit up part two of Soul Journey. Let's get it. My mother was just a girl, 17. Oh, my mother was just a girl, 17. And my dad a little bit. I'd be 
Gotta be a song left to sing. Cause everybody can have thought of everything. One little song that ain't been sung. One little rag that ain't been rung out completely yet. Got a little left One little drop of falling rain One little chance to try again One little bird who makes it home now and then One little piece of endless sky Gotta be a song left to sing. Cause everybody can have thought of everything. One little note that ain't been used. One little word that ain't been abused a thousand times. In a thousand rhymes One little drop of falling rain One little chance to try again One little bird that makes it every now and then One little piece of endless sky Gotta be some
left to see Is everybody can have thought of everything One little song ain't been sung One little rag that ain't been rung out completely yet Until nothing left
Sinatra with the harmonica. Good song.
So there we have it, man. Side two of Soul Journey. Gillian Welch. Man, she's one of those uh, one of those singers that you can listen to all day, that I can listen to all day and not tire of. You know, it's uh, it's like a soul connection with her, you know, and uh, uh, just the wholesomeness of her sound. And, uh, that she's just uh, got so much going on, you know. You can't help but like her sound. You can't help but like the subject matter that she's singing about, how she's portraying things. Yeah, man, great, great delivery. That's all I can say about that. Somebody that I could listen to all day. I can't listen to uh, too many artists all day long, but she's definitely one that I could listen to all day long, man. Um, so let's do this. Let's, this is the end of part two. Let's go right into uh, the review. <clears throat> I already know that part one has been blocked on YouTube. If you're watching this and you're on YouTube, consider yourself at least lucky that you're seeing a part of this. It uh, happens like this often with um, album reactions. Half of the album gets blocked. So if you're wondering, oh, well, how come he breaks up his album in videos uh, sometimes? That's the number one reason why. It's also a time management thing. But more so, I know that if I split it up, instead of the entire thing getting blocked, a lot of the times only part of it gets blocked. And I'm seeing that most of the time it's part one rather than part two. So I, that's why I attach the review to the back end of part two. Uh, and usually it catches. So if you're watching this on YouTube, consider yourself lucky that you're actually seeing part two. Part one, you're going to have to go find it on my um public Patreon or on my uh, Vimeo. So that's how it goes with this man. Now let's do a little review here. First the lady and then the album. Gillian Welch. Gillian Howard Welch is an American singer-songwriter. She performs with her musical partner, guitarist David Rollins. Their sparse and dark musical style, which combines elements of Appalachian music, bluegrass, country, and Americana, is described by the New Yorker as at once innovative and obliquely reminiscent of past rural forms. Welsh and Rollins have collaborated on seven critically acclaimed albums, five released under her name, and two released under the name Dave Rollins Machine. The Dave Rollins Machine. Her 96 debut revival and the 2001 release Time the Revelator received nominations for the Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Folk Album. Her 2003 album Soul Journey introduced electric guitar, drums, and a more upbeat sound to their body of work. After a gap of eight years, she released a fifth studio album, The Harrow and the Harvest, in 2011, which was also nominated for a Grammy for Best Contemporary Folk Album. Welsh was an associate producer and performed on two songs of the soundtrack of the Coen Brothers 2000 film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, a platinum album that won the Grammy Award for Album of the Year in 2002. She also appeared in the film, Attempting to Buy a Soggy Bottom Boys Record. Okay. Yeah, that's not the name of the film. She also appeared in that film, and she was attempting to buy a Soggy Bottom Boys record. Okay. Welsh, while not one of the principal actors, did sing and provide additional lyrics to the siren song, Didn't Leave Nobody But The Baby. In 2018, she and Rollins wrote the song, When A Cowboy Trades His Spurs For Wings, for the coins, the ballad of Buster Scruggs, for which they received the nomination for the Academy Award for Best Original Song. Welsh has collaborated and recorded with Alison Krauss, Ryan Adams, uh, Jay Farr, Emily Harris, Mark Knopfler, The Decemberists, Sam Phillips, Connor Obrist, Annie DeFranco, and Robin Hitchcock. So, Soul Journey. Not a lot of information here on Wikipedia about it. It's just a decent uh, review by All Music here, Zach Johnson of All Music. 
So Soul Journey is the fourth studio album by Gillian Welch. As with all of her previous releases, it is a collaboration with David Rollins. And Soul Journey album review by Zach Johnson of All Music. Zach says, Gillian Welch and David Rollins may in fact shock and appall folk purists with their fourth album, Soul Journey. Are those drums? Is that an organ? Wait a minute, is that an electric bass? The album uses these musical instruments to drive home a living, a living room, lazy summertime jam, se- jam session feel that hasn't really shown itself on Welch's previous releases. The album's opener, Look at Miss Ohio, evolves into her toughest rocker since Pass You By on her debut revival, and the whole album culminates in the relative cacophony of Wrecking Ball, a drunken up baroon stumble highlighted by Ketchum Secker's lopping fiddles lines and Rollins' fuzzed out guitar solo. Between these bookends is a mixed bag of traditional folk songs like Make Me a Pallet on Your Floor, I Had a Real Good Mother and Father, Loose Blues, Phrasing, Lowlands, No One Knows My Name, and a number of trademark, well, uh, Rollins' near-whispered murder ballads and orphan love songs. The thing that shines through most clearly is that the group had a lot of fun making Soul Journey but that doesn't necessarily translate into a terrific album. Aside from a handful of real solid honest-to-gosh gems, the whole album feels a little too casual and off-the-cuff to stand on equal footing with her other recordings. The choruses often become just repeated phrases over and over again, Lowlands, No One Knows My Name, I Made A Lover's Prayer, and The Unfortunate One Monkey. And the songwriting seems less developed as if the initial construction of the song has taken a back seat to the sheer enjoyment of performing it. That being said, it's a wonderfully dusty summertime front porch album, full of whiskey drawls and sly smiles, floorboard stomps and screen door creaks. Maybe that was the whole idea behind the album. While it does not exactly meet the impeccable standards that her previous three releases set, it's still a fine addition to her discography and well worth listening to all summertime long. All right, and that is a review by Zach Johnson of All Music. What do you think of Zach's review? Do you think that he's uh, dead on, right on it, or is he a little off? Where do you where do you put that comparable to his uh, review? How do you see this album overall? Um, if I was to rate it. I would give it a 4 out of 5. A solid 4 out of 5. And uh, I agree with some of the things that he says. I can relate to some of the things that he says uh, to a certain extent. You know, I agree with pretty much everything he says. So, that concludes our look at this excellent album. I really enjoyed it all the way through. And it's an album that, yeah, just like he said, you know, it's great to listen to all summertime long and I would listen to it quite often and I wouldn't skip a single track so that is my test to uh, how much I like an album when it basically I don't consider any of the songs uh, filler where I have to skip through it you know just sit put it on and just listen to it all day long or listen to a whole playlist of her music all day long she's one of those artists that I would do that with man for sure all right y'all so let me just uh Scroll down and check my uh, notes here before I bounce, man. Yeah, so Sasha, Chris, uh, Akachita, Amy. I got uh, one or two new patrons. I got a hit up uh, for reactions and a PayPal submission as well. So, uh, busy week ahead for me. But uh, yeah, I know that there's some uh, some more folk stuff coming. This was the uh, folk rock jams that I was talking about previously. I know there's some more folk stuff coming, and I know there's also um, uh, some progressive metal and uh, some grooves, some soul grooves, a few Latin grooves. So it's going to be quite a mixed bag of things coming up on the platform, which is always cool and which is pretty much the norm for this platform, going from one swinging from one end to another, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you guys, by now, you already know what my parameters are. Pretty much anything goes outside of those parameters. So uh, it's all good, man. 
music is music and uh, it doesn't matter what genre or what specifics as long as it's in good standing in good taste conceived very intelligently or whatever it is you know you will form an appreciation for it most of us will right only some of us uh, stubbornly and ignorantly hold on so hard to one specific area uh, I got a lot of guilty friends about that a lot of my friends um, growing up in the black communities with the hip-hop and the soul and the funk and the grooves I find that they are among the most deliberately ignorant group of people where it comes to music appreciation and allowing for more expansion you know what I'm saying you know uh, you can't sit for a while without turning on something with a hip-hop beat yo man let's explore a little bit but they're my friends but they're in a certain category I can't take them everywhere you know what I'm talking about man all right so they hate when I talk like this but oh well that just tells you that they're still watching though so um yeah, what else I was going to say? Yeah, I also want to do one or two um, uh, interviews and documentaries and stuff like that. I know one of um, one of my co-workers was mentioning the other day about um, Woodstock. I believe it was Woodstock 1990 or was it 99? And it wasn't the classic rock uh, Woodstock, but it might be interesting to check out. So on this particular pr platform, I haven't done any kind of um, documentaries or interviews and things like that that I've done on the classic platform. So it would be nice to do something like that on this platform too. So I might be looking at that down the road. I'm going to pick his brains a little bit more and see if it might qualify as uh, being uh, decent for a reaction. But if you've heard of this and you know uh, what uh, he's talking about and you think it might be a decent reaction, let me know and then I'll check it out further. All right. Okay, man. So that is it. Uh, Thanks very much, Jack. I appreciate the recommendation. Always a great time listening to Gillian Welch, and I'll definitely uh, always make the time to listen to more her, of her stuff uh, should you guys uh, send it my way. Anyways, have a good one. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.